Hello. Today's video, I want to talk about the way I do object pooling. Uh, I think it's a great way of doing it because instead of a singleton pattern, you're going to be using scriptable objects, which helps me not make a mistake when I'm trying to type in a string and then it not matching and such like that. So I've got a really empty scene right now. Uh, it's just got a little slope of black right here. And then I have a red sphere that I'm going to spawn into the game using our uh, game object pool. The sphere just has a basic script of an up force and a side force that is going to create a random one. It's going to throw it up into the air using the rigid body on enable. So every time it's enabled, it's just going to throw itself into the air. So for this, we're going to use two different, two different scripts. One is going to be C sharp script called our pooled object. Now this one's kind of a basic script and there's not a lot going to be going on on this script, but every single object that's going to be in our pool is going to have this script attached to it when it's created. And then the second one is going to be the actual game object pool. Game object pool. I'm just going to do the pooled object first because that's the easiest one to do. Get rid of the start and update methods. And each one is going to have a public game object pool. We're just going to call it pool. So this is a reference to the actual pool that this particular object comes from. Next is going to be an on disable method. Um, in the way I do it is instead of destroying the object, you're just going to disable the object. And when you're going to, when you disable the object, it's going to return the object back into the pool ready to be used again. So we're just going to go grab the pool that is already assigned to it. And we're going to do a return to pool method and then pass in this object. Now this method is underlined because we haven't created it yet. Um, but we're going to do that in just a second. And then the last thing we're going to do on this is an on destroy. So if for some reason this game object gets destroyed, uh, we don't want to return it to the pool and we don't want it sitting just kind of out there. We want to remove it completely from the pool. So uh, we're going to go to the pool again and we're going to say remove object. And this is the object that we want to remove completely from the pool. Now. It's going to go into our game object pool, get rid of all of this, and let's get going on this. Now, game object pool. So I'm just pulling up my references first. All right. So instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to be inheriting from scriptable object. And whenever we do that, we need to um, have a way to create the scriptable object. So we're going to say create asset menu, menu name equals, and you can put this whatever you want. I always do my assets and game object pool. Save that. All right. So now in our hierarchy in our project over here we can right click go to create and then once it saves it's going to have a my objects up here that you can create uh, right now it's not letting me do that because I haven't fixed these errors yet so let's do that right now let's do a return to pool and a remove object method public void return to pool that takes a object called object to return nice and then a public void remove from pool that takes a pooled object object to remove let's just make sure remove object oh it's called remove object not remove from pool Remove, uh, yeah, we're not removing it from the pool. We're just completely removing it. So now that we saved it, we go back over here. No more underlines. We are good in the Unity. Give it just a second. Now we can go create my asset and a game object pool. 
Uh, we're just gonna name this one sphere. Z. Make it plural. And now, what do we actually want on this game object pool? Well, we want a prefab that we're gonna instantiate. So public game object prefab. And we can just assign that to whatever prefab we want to instantiate. Now, uh, in this, we're gonna have, in our game object pool, we're gonna have two lists. We're gonna have a list of objects that are in the pool ready to be used and objects that are being used currently, objects that are active. Uh, so let's create those private list of type game object. And we're gonna call this one objects in the pool. And we're going to private list of game objects called objects in use. All right, then we're going to create the actual meat of the game object pool, which is our public method that's going to return a game object called spawn object. This is the main one that's gonna be called. You're gonna grab the pool and say spawn object, and then you wanna give it a vector, th Ooh, no, vector three, call the position, and a quaternion called rotation. Just like your instantiate method, you wanna give it a, a position and a rotation. And at the very end of our method, we're going to return a game object. Well, do that at the end. So first, we're going to create a new pooled object that we're going to say current object. If if objects in pool dot count is less than or equal to zero. So if our objects in the pool ready to be used is less than or equal to zero, if there's no objects for us to pull, then it's going to, we need to create a new one. So we're going to say game object, new game object. Eh. Oh, don't do that. Where did that do that? Equals instantiate. instantiate that prefab that we have up top. So it's going to create a brand new prefab and then our current object equals new game object dot add component of type pool object. Now what does this do? What this does is it grabs our prefab right up here and creates a new one and then adds this component of pooled object to it. So when we are making these in our hierarchy and in our game, the game objects themselves, we don't have to worry about assigning the pooled object script to them. We're going to automatically do that when we instantiate them using this method right here. And then we're going to say current object dot create. No, that's not right. So current object dot pool equals this. What this does is on this pooled object, this little method, this little public game object pool, it assigns this particular pool to it, whatever pool we are creating. All right, so this is only true if we don't have a one object in the pool, and then it's gonna create a new one and assign the pool to it. Now. The next one, otherwise, if we do have an object in the pool ready to be used, current object is going to equal objects in pool at the zero mark. So it's just going to grab the first one, the oldest one that's in the pool. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, that's why. 
See, I messed this up earlier. This is not going to be a list of game objects. This is going to be a list of pooled objects. Pooled objects. So we're not going to actually be grabbing the game object. We're going to be grabbing this pooled object script that we have on the game object. And then we can always grab the game object using that saying pooled object dot game object. And that'll be fine. All right, so then if there is an object in the pool ready to be used, we're going to say that the current object that we're working on is the first one, the oldest one in that pool. And then we're going to go ahead and remove it. Objects in pool dot remove are this current object. So it takes it out of the pool so it cannot be used anymore. So either way, if one of these two is if we don't have a pool or if we do have it in the pool, it's going to create a new one or just grab the oldest one. Now we can take this object the and add it to our objects in use because we don't want to be messing around or anything. Add current object. So now Whatever, whichever one, whether we're creating a new one or grabbing an old one, we're going to add it into our objects in use list over there. Now we're going to just get down and current object dot set active dot game object dot set active equals true. So we're going to set it to active wherever it was, if it was inactive or active already. We're going to set it to true. That's not how you do that. You use this. There you go. Current object, which is the one we're using, the grab the game object part of it, set the whole thing to active. And then you're going to say current object dot game object dot transform dot position equals the position that we have in the beginning of the method. And then if I could type, then that would be great. Current object dot game object dot transform dot rotation you get where I'm going with this equals the rotation that we assigned at the beginning of this method so it's going to set it to active it's going to put it in the place in the rotation that we want and then it's going to return the current object dot game object get rid of that don't need all that extra space so now this method is done. You're going to spawn the object. It's going to create a new one or grab an old one. It's going to move it to the objects and use list. And then it's going to set it active, move the transform in the position, and return the game object originally. Now the only thing left that we have to do is create these two methods, return to pool, or remove the object entirely. Removing the object entirely is going to be easy. So we're going to say objects in pool dot remove object to remove and we're going to say it's just in case this object was in either list we're just going to remove it entirely from both lists so object to remove if it's in either of these lists up here we're going to get rid of it entirely because it was destroyed and we, we can't undestroy something once it's destroyed now this one right here is a little more complicated but that's all right uh, if objects in pool dot contains object to return if this is in our pool already ready to be used then we don't need to return it so we're just going to return out of the function and be done with it if it's not then we have two options we're going to say if the object in use dot contains. Well, that's not helpful at all. We don't need that. So, if it's not in the pool, then we are going to object to return dot game object dot set active equals false. We're going to set it to inactive, and then we're going to say object to. Ooh, nope object in use. We're going to remove it from there. 
it to return. We're going to remove it completely. And objects in pool, we're going to add it. So what has this done? Uh, if the object is already in our, um, in, in our pool, ready to be used, then just get out of this function. We don't need this. We don't need the rest of this. If it's not, we're going to go ahead and set it inactive. And then we're going to remove it from our objects in use pool and return it, add it to our objects in the pool so that it's ready to be called the next time spawn object is called. So that is the entire script uh, that we're going to be using. So now that we go back into Unity, we've created our spheres here, but we can create another one. And we're going to call this, I don't know, bullets for our character that shoots out bullets. And all you have to do is assign the prefab. And I'll just move this so you can see it. Assign this prefab to whatever you want it to be from the project window. Um, we're just worrying about spheres for now. So we're just going to go here. We're going to grab the sphere that I talked about earlier. Get that out of the way. Now we're going to go to the spawner here. And to test this out, we're going to need one more script, which is just kind of like we are object spawner. Do, do, do. Nope. Object spawner. Here we are. So public game object pool that we're going to call our pool. Now we're just going to call it spheres. Why not? And then on fixed update, wow, fixed update, then we're going to say spheres.spawn object, and we're going to say transform.position, transform.rotation. That's literally all we're going to do. We are essentially done. We're going to go back to Unity here, let it refresh. And I've set up these two spawners. We're just going to go ahead and add object spawner, assign any one of our game object pools. And this is great because you can keep them all straight. You can call them what you want them to call. We're just going to give it spheres. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Copy that component over to our other one. Paste component as new. Then we're going to go into our game, press play, fingers crossed that it actually works, and boom. So right now, you've got all these objects. Now there's nothing set on this that is going to deactivate them after a certain amount of time, um, but most games are going to do that. With a bullet, you're going to deactivate it when it hits something, or a special effect or something like that. You can put a little timer on it using a, um, a coroutine and just say after five seconds, set it inactive. Don't destroy it, you're just gonna set it inactive, and then when you set it inactive, that's what's gonna use this pooled object script to return it to the pool, ready to be used for the next time. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it made a little bit more sense uh, than I did sounded coming out, so thank you for watching.